What if I told you that you can easily build a simple and powerful to-do list within Google Sheets in just a matter of minutes? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that. Starting all the way from scratch, I'll show you how you can create the categorized and interactive to-do list that you see right in front of you. What's amazing about this to-do list is that you can add a virtually unlimited number of tasks in one place. You can assign and sort your tasks by priority. You can give each task its own due date. And once you mark a task as complete, it automatically becomes grayed out so you can easily keep your focus on the tasks that you still need to finish. On top of that, you can further categorize your tasks via the tabs at the bottom of your spreadsheet. For instance, here I've got my list items for Project A, Project B, and Project C. And maybe you want to collaborate with and even share your task list with others. Since your to-do list is stored in Google Sheets, you can share this list with anyone else in just a matter of seconds. Although this might not be the most complicated spreadsheet out there, it is certainly a tool worth having, especially when you need a quick and powerful organized task list in a pinch. That being said, if you want to learn how to build this template all the way from scratch, then let's get to it. We will be starting with a blank Google Sheets workbook. So once you have it open, the first thing that you should do is type in the headers for your to-do list. So in cell A1, enter in task. Then in cell B1, enter in priority. Then in cell C1, enter in due date. And in cell D1, enter in done. After that, you want to add some formatting to the headers to distinguish them from the rest of your to-do list. So go ahead and select A1 through D1, and then bold the font, add a dark blue fill color, and change the font color to white. From here, go ahead and type in some dummy data. This will give you a skeleton to work with going forward. And once you have entered in a few sample to-do list items, you can move on to focus on the formatting. The first thing that I suggest is to click the space right here to select all of the cells in the worksheet. Then up here in the name box, you should see how many rows are in the worksheet. Here for me, I have up to 1000 rows in this worksheet. Now the goal is to resize these rows to give a little more space between each to-do list item. But if you right click on the row headings, you will find that the option to resize the rows has been grayed out. So what do you do? This time, instead of clicking here to select all of the cells, click in the name box and type in one colon and then the number of rows in your worksheet. For me, that's 1000. After that, go ahead and press the Enter key. And now you will find that you can resize the rows of your worksheet. I don't know why this is the case, but that's how Google Sheets works, at least for now. Either way, go ahead and select the option to resize the selected rows. Then change the row height to 30. After that, you can click on Done. Now you have more space, but the text is a little small and the alignment is off. To fix this, click here to select all of the cells in the worksheet, and then increase the font size to 12, change the horizontal alignment to left, and change the vertical alignment to middle. And now everything is a little more readable and easier to see. While you're at it, go ahead and change the size of column A to 200 to give more space for the task descriptions. After that, increase the size of column C to 150, and then change the horizontal alignment of column D to center. After that, select the range D2 through D4, and then go to Insert, and then Checkbox. You can also change the font color of the checkboxes to dark blue as well. Okie dokie, next you're going to select all the cells in column C except the top one. You can do this by selecting cell C2 and then press Control Shift Down Arrow two times. From here, change the number format to date. 
And if you don't like this date format, you can click the number formats again, and then you can select custom date and time. You can then search for a date format that fits your own personal preference, and then you can click on apply. Awesome. To get back to the top of the worksheet, use the keyboard shortcut control up arrow. The to-do list looks pretty good. For the next step, let's add some conditional formatting to gray out any tasks that have been marked as done. To do this, select cell A2, and then use control shift right arrow, and then control shift down arrow two times. From here, go to format, and then conditional formatting. In the panel on the right, under format cells if, select the option of custom formula is. Now, in the value or formula box, enter in equals dollar sign D2. After that, under formatting style, change the fill color to light gray. And also change the font to a slightly darker gray. You can then click on done. And of course, to get back to the top of the worksheet, you can use the keyboard shortcut, control, up arrow. Now, if we take another look at the conditional formatting rule that we just created, why is the formula equals dollar sign D2? Well, we want the conditional formatting to be dependent on the checkbox values in column D. So the dollar sign in front of the D ensures that the conditional formatting for all cells looks to column D. Now, what about the two? There is no dollar sign in front of the two, which means this is a relative reference. And that means this part of the reference, the two, will change depending on the row that each cell of the selected range is in. So the cells in row two will reference the value in cell D2, and the cells in row three will reference the values in cell D3, and so on and so forth. And all of the values in column D will be either true or false. An unchecked box evaluates to false, and a checked box evaluates to true. And if the value is true, the conditional formatting will be activated. And now that we've covered all that, you can go ahead and exit out of the conditional format rules panel on the right. Okie dokie, the to-do list is almost complete. To clean things up, remove the grid lines by going to view, and then show, and uncheck grid lines. After that, select any cell in your to-do list, and then go to data and create a filter. With the filter applied, you can sort and filter your to-do list by any of the columns with just a click of a button. Also, if you add new tasks below, the filter will expand automatically to include those new tasks. You can then add a priority number, add a due date, and to get the checkbox into the done column, use Control D to copy down the checkbox from above. Now for the finishing touch to the worksheet, go to View, and then Freeze, and select one row to freeze the top row. You will now be able to scroll and keep the headers in view at all times. This is very useful, especially when your to-do list starts to get really long. Okie dokie. Now that you have the first worksheet complete, you can create others simply by right-clicking on the worksheet tab on the bottom, and then select Duplicate. You can repeat this process as many times as you want. And then you can rename the sheet tabs to fit whatever needs you might have. For the sake of this example, I'm just going to label these Project A, Project B, and Project C. And now you have a task list that you can use to keep track of all of your tasks in one place. And if you want to share this list with any of your friends, coworkers, or colleagues, all you have to do is click on the share button near the top right corner of the spreadsheet, and then you can type in the name or email of the person that you want to share it with, and then click on the send button. And that is how you can quickly and easily build a simple but powerful to-do list all in Google Sheets. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something new, 
I encourage you to give this video a like and maybe even subscribe. That way you don't miss any content like this and always have something new to learn. That being said, thank you so much for watching and until next time, I will see you in the next Spreadsheet Life video.